Yes, we might, I might be on the front line, but I am not a leader. I am not the leader of the movement. I am just lending myself as a mouthpiece. I feel like they're taking us for a ride. You cannot have the evidence they assembled. And you know they're joking with a generation that listens to true crime podcasts to sleep. Like you buddies, how to get away with murder. To grow up on all these um, detective kind of movies. And we're like, it's a very stupid trope that uh, why specifically did they only bring Airtel Air lines? The panties that they brought were fresh. We refuse to believe that story that uh, a person would have killed 42 people in a period of two years and the neighbors would not have figured out. So a, a, a babe comes into your house but never leaves. I think it was on Friday when we had the Inspector General um, resign. Do you think something was off about that? Of course, something very sinister. And I will, for the IG and a guy called uh, Bungay, for Kome and Bungay, I feel like they should not be let off the hook very easily because remember, this 50 number that we're coming up with was because of the cops. You've talked about the president firing his entire cabinet and... Um, most of these people that he was working with, or rather his cabinet, were close allies. So what would happen if we see them again in positions of power? We cannot see them again in positions of power. We've made this very clear. And, and you'll see the state is trying to drive a, a very sinister agenda where they're propping up very small crowds to say, Tunataka Ababu Arudi, Tunataka Kuri Arudi, Tunataka Nani Arudi. They're trying to make it look like Paul's say, Paul's favor, that... Um, uh, certain uh, members of, 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 of cabinet should come back. We are saying no. If the president wants to, sh wants to show us goodwill, these people are very corrupt. These people, even so, someone say at Murko Menarudi. Speaking of having young people in the cabinet, you know, you've been, this movement, since it started, we've seen, you know, it's a leaderless uh, yes. movement, tribeless movement, but there are people who have been very vocal, such as you. And whenever you speak, people are like, you know, we would want this person to be our leader. Would you want to be the person who leads the young people? Would you classify yourself as a Gen Z leader? Uh, hypothetically speaking, if you got a call to have or to, you know, to be a cabinet secretary, would, would it be a hard pass or I, I can actually think about it? You're not willing to give the president some time to act on the things that he has talked about. But we've given him time. Remember, the president has been in government since uh, 2013, was it? Yeah, or to, to, uh, since Uhuru times. This is not a new president. Uh, the way I look at it, it's one big regime. So in the event that, you know, um, Ruto is out of the presidency, what will happen? How will Kenya look like? So we'll figure it out. So um, the entire time during the protest, you've received love and hate in equal measure. Leo wa Kenya wanakupenda, kesho wako like, okay, now you need to back down. How are you dealing with that? I'm not dealing, I'm just living. I'm a man who very, uh, up until very recently, I was going through a lot, even just mentally. And um, and I think I've shared this, this publicly. The Friday before Mandamano started, I was found on a rooftop uh, with a noose on my neck, very well tied. The only thing that saved me is I was unconscious. Like what 10th floor, I would have fallen off or not. But my friends came in good time. The human mind is resilient, and I'm also surrounded by a lot of love. My inner circle is, yani, these are people who affirm me and remind me to keep on going, both young and old, my family, my friends, and I think that's how I've been going. And of course, God, because there's people who've been praying for me, Maze. Every time before I leave Mandamano, my girlfriend prays, she lays hands on me. I go to like, hey, Maze, as you go out, nini, 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 nini. And, and for me, that's a very important thing, and I'm like, I cannot fail because I am... Uh, I have, I'm covered. So for me, even with all these stress from Gava and whatnot, I see it as a, there's potential for, there's potential for anyone who's going through whatever it is, there's potential to overcome. I never thought it was, but for me, I've clearly seen that it's possible to overcome. The generation that you would fool is over. We are now tribeless, fearless, partyless, and peaceful. The, the politics used to play Kitambo is over. Change, shape up or ship out. 
what's up everybody my name is Eva Nyaga and my guest right about now is this man we've been looking for for such a long time but finally we have managed to find him and he's here on Kenya online media and he's been very very vocal during the protest and we've seen him everywhere and he goes by the name Kasmuel Makore and we just want to have a conversation unpack yesterday's events and see what exactly Kenyans want and how we are supposed to move forward um Kasmuel how are you Hi, Eve. How are you? Happy to be here. Finally, we've uh, we've made it happen, Cynthia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Happy to have you as well. Awesome. All right. So, um, yesterday was the 16th of July, and um, we were having the. Let me just put them how put the put it how you put it. Pro good governance um, protest, and um, the reason why we decided to call you is because we just want to know why were you on the streets yesterday? Because we've seen the president um has already done most of the things that Kenyans wanted. So why were you back on the streets yesterday? Uh, I think a lot of people do not understand why we are doing these protests. Mm -hmm. A lot of people try to make it look as if we are calling for anarchy. Mm -hmm. But what it is, and as we've aptly put it, correcting that notion in the media that this is anti-government protests. What we're doing is saying this system that's currently in here is not working for us. This system is majambazi. And you find that corruption is at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. Uh, public resources are being looted, kids are going hungry in schools. As a young person, when you apply for an ID, first you have to pay a thousand bob and it takes forever to come out, which is a lot of these things that are happening. So currently the, the system as is, is not working. But two, for me yesterday was a very personal affair because there is a point where it could have been dialogued. When it was the first time when people were talking about the finance bill and we were saying reject, he could have rejected it and Parliament would have done the right thing without us losing lives. We had just lost one life. Remember when we started, we only had lost Rex and we only had other people injured. But now as at yesterday, the count was at 50. 50 young people have died and, and for me it's a madness. So we are back on the streets for police reforms. Not just sending, sending people home without accountability. That's part of what we were doing on the streets. Two, these promises that a lot of people are making it look as if President Ruto has given us uh, sudden advances. But no, there are no advances that Pre President Ruto has given us. And I say this because none of the, when the cabinet was appointed, um, it was gazetted. Now he says he has dismissed his cabinet, but it has not been gazetted. You see, now we can't trust him. Um, on, was it 8th of July when Murkomen said they will try and see that the levy is not increased? The levy has gone for, on fuel. As much as, yes, it has not increased on the pump, but the fuel levy has gone from 18 shillings to 25 shillings. So it means that this government is taking us on rounds. And what we are saying, at this point, there is no goodwill coming from the government. And we want a confirmation that if we continue being ourselves, because we've always been peaceful, we've always been pro-good governance, that they will not abduct us. You've seen even as early as, as recently as this morning, the DCI abducted a person in a police station. And then they tweeted out and said, sorry, this was a case of mistaken identity. So it's just one of those things where it's things that we cannot f fix in a day. So people just looked at this and thought it was just about the finance bill. But we also have a list of things that pile up to good governance. Because good governance does not just end with the finance bill. You know, and whatever it is that we're doing, we're fighting for the people, for the bodies of the people that were found in quarry. We're fighting for the people. There's someone who went out for Mandamano Skumoja. And he'll never walk again. I owe it to that person to go on the streets and continue this fight and ensure we find a better Kenya. There's a person who left home and will never go back. There's a person who left Leon Aliombe wana mama yake. Alafu, suddenly, this man is never going to go back home. It's, it's those kinds of things that made me go on the street. And I know this is the spirit that even everyone who was on the street were saying, enough is enough. We are tired of the killings. We are tired of the plunder. These people are, will take public debt. In our names, they use it to benefit their private enter enterprise and empires and then expect us to pay collectively. So that's, those are parts of the things. In a whole, it's good governance. So it's not a thing which you can sort out in one or two demonstrations. We are draining the swamp and fixing the entire system. That's why it's a series that will keep on going. Yeah. So um, we started off with hashtag reject the finance bill, hashtag um, occupy parliament, hashtag, hashtag. And now we are currently at hashtag Ruto must go. Right. So what does that look like? Is, is our president a problem? And if he's out of um, this seat, will that solve the problems that you're having right now? When we say Ruto must go, one, we've consistently said, I personally have time without number said, this means that uh, his entire government should go. 
A lot of people think that when we say Ruto must go, we're only targeting the Kenya Kwanzaa government. We're targeting even the alleged opposition because they're also part of this government and they're not acting in the, right, in the interest of the Kenyan. So when we say Ruto must go, it is to pile pressure on the highest office in the land because we have known that State House has consistently captured Bunge. Since the executive has captured the legislature, when we say Ruto must go because he's the one who's making all these key decisions, he needs to sit down with his government and say, what is it that you people are not telling me from the ground? Because clearly he's working on an intelligence gap. There are a lot of things that the president needs to know that he currently does not know. So we are calling him. To, we are calling it to his attention to say, if we are not devoid of good leaders. So a lot of people try to make it look like we are calling for a constitutional crisis or whatnot. But we're saying, as Article One says, all sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya and shall be exercised only in accordance to this constitution. And then he goes ahead to say the people may, and it goes ahead to say we may delegate that to our representatives and whatnot. This system, when we say Ruto must go, the system does not work for us. As I have put it currently, it's not working for you. So the people who are afraid of anarchy are people who are benefiting from this system. It's not the young person who's watching. Anyone who's watching through this screen is not benefiting from the system. I know I'm not benefiting from the system. And you could look at me and you say, oh, he looks a bit privileged. But the system is not benefiting you. You cannot apply for a PSC job if you don't have connections. There are jobs which they're telling us are there abroad. But if you filter through, you find there are work, jobs of being domestic workers. So those are the kinds of things that make me really act. And I'm like, we have to sort this out. So a lot of the people who are, you'll find the people who are panicking are either people who think you're doing this for political or tribal mileage. But they're like, no, we're very clear. We're saying the system of brutalism, which includes cronism, you're hiring on incompetence. If you look at the entire cabinet, you remember how these people uh, were talking to us. You remember how they were shoving their money, their accolades uh, down our chest. Our Some of them were not even educated, they're holding offices as frauds. We're looking at this and we're saying we want to examine this system and say when we say Ruto must go, the Kenya, Kenya is our business. When the colonialist world was here, um, it, nobody asked what's next. We were like, we want freedom. And for, for quite a long time, we've had flag independence, but real, real independence, we've not had it. We still have less than a thousand people controlling all the wealth in the country being richer than 55 million of us so we will figure that out and we're figuring it out slowly and there are kenyans who are consistently saying that this is a loophole but no i don't think of it as a loophole i'm thinking about it as this is our chance to right a few wrongs a few things that we've gotten wrong consistently as a country and we're inviting everyone to come and join us because it's very easy to ask what next but again that's what i would tell you yes you've quit your job so it's not working and all of us are struggling. We're trying to put it out there. We're saying, if he has refused to shape up, because if the system is broken, because we are, what we are saying is we need to change the entire system. If the system is broken and there, pe there were people in the system previously, if he brings in new people to the system, they are still going to perpetuate those kinds of things. So we are asking the country to collectively think with us and say, this is what a new Kenya looks like. We are inviting you to imagine a new Kenya with us. Just the same way the people who are the, the Mau Mau invited the current the, 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 the natives to think of a Kenya devoid of Mkoloni. Mzungwa ende ulaya Africa party uhuru. We are inviting you to help us believe, like conceptualize what does a new Kenya look like. It is not just upon us. Yes, we might, I might be on the front line, but I am not a leader. I am not the leader of the movement, I am just lending myself as a mouthpiece and I know somebody else will come, like you guys are doing digital activism by putting our stories out there. There are people who are giving us water to the people who are um, in the front lines. There are people who have been giving us uh, flags and placards and it's volunteers from all over the country. We are inviting you guys just the way we have, you've been consistent with them. Um, your kindness we're inviting you to conceptualize a new kenya with us yes All right so um some of the people who are in the streets yesterday we saw um, some people laying flowers, especially to the lo uh, to the lives that were lost and all the bodies that were found at Quarry. And um, I don't know what your take on that was. And I remember you talking about that yesterday. And the reason some people were also very agitated and the reason why they came to the streets was because of that as well. It was a very unfortunate incident what happened at Quarry. We were with uh, a few protesters who even actually gave me more information that part of the some of the bodies that were found had... Uh, Toothpaste, yeah. uh, toothpaste in, 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 their, in their eyes. 
I cannot fully speak on good authority on what really happened in Kwari. But I refuse to buy the story that the DCI is giving us because I feel like they're taking us for a ride. You cannot have the evidence they assembled. And you know they're joking with a generation that listens to true crime podcasts to sleep. Like you buddies, how to get away with murder, to grow up on all these um, detective kind of movies. And we're like, it's a very stupid trope that... Uh, why specifically did they only bring Airtel Air lines? Mm. The panties that they brought were fresh. If we're going to be honest, anyone who's been with a woman and knows how it works, panties don't look like that. Of course, you could argue that they're wearing pant these panty liners nowadays, but I'm like, you're lying to us because you cannot bring that as evidence. The laptop that they brought, we don't use it publicly. If anything, it was procured by the government of Kenya. We refuse to believe that story, that uh, a person would have killed 42 people in a period of two years and the neighbors would not have figured out so a, a, a babe comes into your house but never leaves you want to tell me that the neighbors never figured it out there was no foul smell coming from this place and even the tools that he was using i was not convinced that you can hack a person without them listening but also as a person who marched in the march against femicide in uh, in march how comes we did not know about these bodies because that's insulting the collective intelligence of the women who have been doing such a great job in updating us of the things that are happening in the country. So I, I refuse to believe that story. It's a cover-up for a thing. Again, it does not help that immediately after this, Quarry was set on fire. Mm -hmm. What is happening? Who burnt it? Leave alone um, Quarry being set on fire. Yeah. I think it was on Friday when we had the Inspector General um, resign. Do you think something was off about that? Of course, something very sinister. And I will, for the IG and a guy called uh, Bungay, for Kome and Bungay, I feel like they should not be let off the hook very easily because remember, this 50 number that we're coming up with was because of the cops. There is over 400 people who have been injured. Some people's lives have been altered forever. These people are never going to know life the same as it were. Um, there is bl a lot of blood in the, in the hands of the police. So a resignation is not enough. You cannot just uh, assuage us with a resignation. I refuse it. Uh, there's most definitely a more a deeper, more sinister um, motive. Mm -hmm. I, I, I cannot speak fully on good authority because Taki Kweneza's story is a jabba, mm -hmm. but um, there needs to be more than just reshuffles. Mm -hmm. We need to see prosecutions. You guys were on the streets yesterday. The killer cop who we've identified consistently was back on the street carrying a pistol, still masked up. That's, those are some of the things that really, really break my heart. And I'm like, these are not reforms which we agitate for online or at home. That's why I was on ground yesterday. I was like, we have to remind these people that they should not mistake our patriotism for weakness. They cannot kill us and lead us. These are people who are interested in burning the country down so that they can rule the ashes. And we are saying no. As a generation, we've just said... We have refused and rejected this whole establishment that you're trying to create for us. This system did not work for our grandparents, our parents, and our siblings. And it most definitely is not going to work for us. Yeah. So I think most definitely we need to investigate a bit more thoroughly what the motive behind these resignations were. Because, you know, at, at a certain point, people don't resign. At a, certain, at a certain jurisdiction, there's a level, there's a hierarchy at which you are, a resignation is deeper it has a deeper meaning so it could be a fire or a whatever and you could say that this person enjoys a uh, uh, security of tenure and whatnot but uh, no there's something there's most definitely something we also had in the same same instance we also had um police officers that uh, were in the police um, station just next to quarry they were transferred to another police station is that off as well it is absolutely why would you transfer them at such a critical time because if these are the policemen who have been around the area they're the policemen who know the ins and out of that neighborhood why would you transfer them at such a crucial point it means there's something that they're trying to hide what is what is that transfer about if they are part of the syndicate that uh, caused this we're asking for for them to be quickly arrested and arraigned in court because they very easily um, arraign uh, innocent protesters and they trump up all the charges like right now you see there've been people will be accused for mugging they'll be accused for being drunk and disorderly people who are sober we have them on camera harassing them while they are masked and they all the policemen get is just a, a, a little transfer I does that also speak to the lack of accountability from, you know, the government because the police is the government? Yes, because, you know, that's what we've been saying. We're on the streets, just if I were to clarify this agenda, 
We are on the street for good governance, for accountability, and the war against corruption. If I were to condense this, the, the, the movement as I understand it, what we are fighting for, as I understand it, is those three things. Because if we sort out those three core areas, we will sort out a lot of Kenya's problems. Accountability is a protester will be shot dead and it will take forever for us to get a post-mortem or for their body to be cleared. A protester will be arrested very swiftly and prosecuted. Uh, the people who entered parliament, some of them, people now you see, they are surfacing, they are surfacing dead and whatnot, and they are very quick to catch these kinds of people. But we have members of government who have active cases. One of them has a murder case. He's a murderer who was even projected on the DCI page. But nothing has happened to him. He still has the moral, he feels like he has the moral capacity and audacity to even come and lecture us to tell us things about Gen Z and saying that he inspires the youth. There are people who have active fraud and uh, sexual harassment and corruption and graft cases, but they're still serving in government. That is the kind of accountability we feel is lacking in all arms of government. Remember, throughout this entire process, the Chief Justice has not offered her voice. She has not said anything with regards to, uh, to the condemning or giving us guidance or whatever. She has not spoken and therefore we do not have faith. Uh, and this is quite ironical because the, the chair of the LSK who has been overworking is called Faith. We do not have faith in the judiciary because the head has refused to acknowledge us. And you see even the president, before he acknowledges that people have died, it takes him such a long time. But uh, when a bishop passes, they are quick to say, oh, we've lost a, a gallant soldier. What happened to the people who actually shed their blood for this country? And that's the thing which, you know, is further deepens the divide between the church and the state. And we are like, for us to continue, this madness of church mixing with state will have to stop. Yeah. Let me take you back to, you know, um, the quarry case, because, I mean, it's still something that has a lot of public interest and um, public eye. So um, they have arrested a suspect, you know, and um, some Kenyans are of the opinion that I, there's something off about this. Like, this investigation was done so fast. And um, when this happened, we were still in the middle of the protest. There's a lot of unrest. Everything is just in shambles. Yes. So could it be that, you know, this person is just a scape scapegoat so that we don't have so much unrest in the country? I firmly believe this person is a scapegoat. Um, the evidence they are attaching to him is flimsy. The, there's no way they would have been that swift with the investigation because unless it was an active case f dating from Kitambo, which I know it was not, because there is no connection. Again, the evidence they're giving us for this person is very, very sketchy. Nobody understands, nobody knows him, and you've seen the people who've recorded uh, the other statements. A lot of it is uh, it's very flimsy. It's flimsy at best, and I don't know what it is, but if I were to speculate, I do not want to speculate because uh, I'm out of scope here, but there's something sinister about this suspect. There's no way uh, suddenly he just presented himself and, and, and claimed that he killed 42 people. Well, how stupid are we? How stupid do the... But as the police force look at, they look at us and they think we're very, uh, we are not intelligent at all. We can tell them anything. And that's what we're also saying. Part of us saying Ruto must go, we're just saying this, this is part of what we're calling Rutoism. Because we need to narrow it down and say this is the person we're attaching it to. Not people have tried to say, oh, previous administrations, we were not old enough during previous administrations. Unfortunately, we have come into this generation and found this administration, and this is the administration we will deal with. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, um, just last week, you've talked about the president firing his entire cabinet. And um, most of these people that he was working with, or rather his cabinet, were close allies. So... What would happen if we see them again in positions of power? We cannot see them again in positions of power. We've made this very clear. And, and you'll see the state is trying to drive a, a very sinister agenda where they're propping up very small crowds to say, Tunataka Ababu Arudi, Tunataka Kuri Arudi, Tunataka Nani Arudi. They're trying to make it look like Paul's say, Paul's favor, that um, certain uh, members of, 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 of cabinet should come back. We are saying no. If the president wants to, wants to show us goodwill, these people were very corrupt. These people, even so, someone say at Murko Menarudi. And uh, if we're going to deal with it honestly, we know it's a lie. And the government also plants and we cannot, uh, they're not at a devoid of propaganda. That's one of the things which we cannot afford to ignore. Therefore, uh, 
what we've said, we do not want to see anybody who's been in a previous government before. Do not use this. No recycling? Uh, no recycling at all. Do not use this chance to settle political scores. Give us fresh blood because Kenya is not devoid of good leaders. Give us people who've never had a corruption case before. Give us people who've never been involved in any government before. Give us people who, give us young people in cabinet. I, why am I being afraid of saying it? Give us young people in cabinet. We want to see young people in cabinet. Um, give it under merit. People who understand public management and uh, and, and have, a, have a decent understanding of finance so that we don't have these people embarrassing us. A cabinet should not be able, should not embarrass us the way this previous cabinet embarrassed us at all, at all, at all. Yeah. Speaking of having young people in the cabinet, you know, you've been, this movement since it started, we've seen, you know, it's a leaderless uh, movement, tribeless movement, but there are people who have been very vocal, such as you. And whenever you speak, people are like, you know, we would want this person to be our leader. Would you want to be the person who leads the young people? Would you classify yourself as a Gen Z leader? I wouldn't. I wouldn't think of myself as such because that's such a heavy responsibility. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that I don't know yet in life that I will, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm working on in terms of study and, and getting um, some of those uh, just wisdom that comes from study, life, relationships, those kinds of things. Um, I, I don't think... When, I'm, when I do this, and this is a thing which people do not understand, when I got on the streets, I was not getting there as a leader. I was not trying to position myself as a leader. Uh, and even when I'm doing these media things, it's because I understand that there is someone who will want to listen to what our message is without insults. There's someone who listens probably to Kenya online media who's never seen my TikTok, for example, who's never seen whatever it is that we stand, and those kinds of things. So I think maybe it's very early... It's still too early even for me. I would be unfair if I tried to give you a, a, a leadership analysis. Um, if the people decide and they decide to trust me, I, I, I'm happy to offer myself up as a, uh, for whatever use it is. But to be fair, it's still too early. I still, I still feel like it's too early um, to have this conversation because we still have a lot of momentum. Um, remember, the leading idea is better than a leader because it lends us to a working system. So right now we still have the momentum of the leading idea. There's no need for us to shrink the conversation into uh, this is our leader, this should be nini, 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 nini. If, if we do a good job, the people are going to see it and our work will speak for itself. Mm -hmm. And if the time comes and, and the Kenyans decide, then who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, uh, hypothetically speaking, if you got a call to have or to, you know, to be a cabinet secretary, would, would it be a hard pass or... I, I can actually think about it. Uh, again, that's a, I've, I've, to be fair, I've not thought about that question. And therefore, I, I think I could fumble the answer. But it's something I would give a lot of thought. It's something I would give a lot of thought in the sense that I don't know when next such an opportunity would arise. But that is only if we do not achieve the objectives of this movement. If we've not figured the point. Because remember, we're still saying Ruto must go. We're still doing all that kind of stuff. Um... If we do not achieve, which I don't believe that we won't achieve, I st I'm a firm believer that we will achieve whatever it is that we've set out to do. Um, uh, again, I would bundle this question with that one for being a leader. In, in my, to be fair, to me it feels very early and I, I run the risk of um, jeopardizing myself in, in speaking because I feel like you know when questions are asked, uh, answers are usually deserved. If I'm going to be honest, I just have not thought about I've not thought about the situation or a scenario where I, I get such a call. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm still so focused, so committed to the movement and injecting and communicating what our woes are mm -hmm. that uh, a CS position would be useless mm -hmm. compared to the war against corruption, would be useless compared to the war against uh, bad governance, would be useless compared to the lack of police accountability. And um, if they use that to try and silence me, then you see that would be a very, very hard pass. Uh, but I will consult widely, um, talk to my mentors, and eventually I know I will, will get an, I'll, I'll get an answer. Um, speaking of police brutality, um, yesterday in town was really chaotic. Uh, the numbers were not as big as the previous protest, and there was tear gas all over. There was um, right now we were 
we just came from City Mochari and the, there's a family of a young man who was shot in Kitengala yes. the age of 19 and he was not even involved in the protest and every other time we are told you know these people are and you can see even in the comment section you know it is the, the protesters are peaceful it, it's the police who are causing the chaos so what's your take on that and next time when there are protests what should happen the protesters have always been peaceful I've not attended any protest where any of us were violent. I only saw one time somebody tried, tried to throw a stone and Mazewi dealt with that guy so mercilessly. So I, I don't have thoughts. At this point, it's not even about thoughts because, now think about it, a 19-year-old is a kid. You've come from, there's a family that's going to bury a 19-year-old who was not even involved in the protests and they want to muddy it around uh, uh, whatever papers and saying nini and the government will not will not apologize i hate this idea that revolutions must cost us blood because the blood hungry people the bloodhounds have always been the police it's been the government consistently i've not seen any of the protesters turn against any protester even when i was in hot water nobody tried to physically assault me apart from the police so um we just keep the peace up. We keep praying consistently. We keep praying that we make it back home once we leave to go into to fighting for a, a better country. Uh, I know tomorrow's protests are going to be different. Uh, the, 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 the goal is to dial up the peace. Uh, so we, we are tired of doing these cat and mouse games. And personally, I know this is going to be my strategy. Wherever I will be, I will occupy. I won't run. I'll just sit there. Eh, sasa kwa sababu ukikimbia tunachapwa ukifanya nini they harass us I'm, I'm tired I know I will just sit down and I'm inviting anyone who's willing to come and sit with me let's come and sit down let's see what happens uh, with that yeah, yeah okay. um tomorrow you said that you'll just sit down and you're inviting everybody who will attend the protest to just sit down peacefully yeah. no, but it doesn't have to be like that you know there's people who still because those running who says sitting down is the only way to protest there's people who consistent we have to actively march them because i've marched and i've seen how how taxing it is to my heart and how they shoot people i'm like i don't want it to be a mistake aren't you if you're shooting us we want to know that uh, this is like you've drawn the battle lines mm -hmm. we we are tired of the police being cowards mm -hmm. Uh, what is this thing that, uh, and I was asking, what weak men are these that we've given guns? That the only way they can show their might is uh, while pointing their guns and shooting at unarmed and like, harmless uh, civilians. While what weak men are these that have to shoot children to assert their dominance? To throw poison in the air for them to remind us that, uh, and, and the things that we're fighting for, we're fighting for their rights as well for their rights and their freedoms. So personally, that's the strategy I'm going to take. I'll be even more fearless, but even more peaceful. But uh, it doesn't have to be like that for everyone. Yes, you do whatever it is. As long as you're peaceful and we're acting within the, the constitutionally, our constitutionally afforded rights, you do you. Yeah. How long are you willing to be in the streets? Oh. How long are you going to push this, mo this movement? Uh, we'll push it until we find the results that we're looking for. Uh, personally, I've just resigned my fate that uh, uh, but this is not how I was hoping to spend my 20s. But now, as a marked man in my country, I'm like, I might as well do it so that my daughter does not have to go through this. Um, so we, uh, personally, I, I'm committed to seeing this to the end. Until the government heals and gives us good governance, we have uh, the war on graft. Uh, they stop this genocide that is corruption. And we have proper accountability, have police reforms, and uh, we will do it. Personally, I'm interested in doing it for the long haul. So. You're not, you're not willing to give the president some time to act on the things that he has talked about. But we've given him time. Remember, the president has been in government since uh, 2013, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or to, to, since Uhuru times. This is not a new president. Uh, the way I look at it, it's one big regime. So you're not counting, at uh, he, you know, since the time we elected him even, as the president of Kenya? Even since the time we elected him as the president of Kenya, it's been 21 months. What do they have to show? How many kilometers of road have they laid down? How many kilo kilometers of railway? How many people in the rural area have connectivity to electricity? How many people have uh, water? How many people have food? How many people have uh, connectivity to the internet? Have they improved the education sector? Is our uh, defense better? Are we in better terms with uh, allied nations? Why are, we in, why are we taking strong positions in uh, conflicts, global conflicts that have been neutral? He's shown us that uh, even with time, this cannot be fixed. He's irredeemably um, in his head. 
and if he doesn't get out of it, um, uh, uh, he's taking this country to the absolutely wrong direction. Yeah. So in the event that, you know, um, Ruto is out of the presidency, what will happen? How will Kenya look like? So we'll figure it out. He's still in, pre in, in, in presidency right now. We're trying to overhaul a system. And that's why consistently I said even earlier in the video, I invite all of us to try and imagine a, a Kenya without corruption. A Kenya with the roads which work. A Kenya where the rich do not lord over the poor. No, a Kenya where there's equality, where you can get treated if you go to hospital. I invite all of us to imagine such a Kenya. Uh, but of course, everyone wants to hear, you know, after Ruto leaves, Gashagwa gets in, and then if we say Ruto and Gashagwa go, Wetangula comes in. We could form a caretaker committee. Yesterday we saw the government of France resigned. What is, what is so special about Kenya? We will figure so it's it out. It's possible. It is possible and we'll figure it out. We are very smart people. Mm -hmm. We are a country of smart men and women. Mm -hmm. We will figure it out. I'm very, very sure. Yeah. Mm. Do you think there are people who are thriving when the country is, you know, and there, there are people who might think that, you know, this movement now, Imifika Point, Yenye, Sasaini, Anaki. I definitely have a point. Anyone who says that is a person who's fishy. Of course, there are people who are benefiting from uh, a state of unrest in the country. There are people who will try to uh, besmirch the name of this. There are people who are going to use this movement to try and settle scores because there are people who are fighting for it honestly. And then there, there's Gen Z and then there's Gun Z. There are people who are trying to uh, usurp power from, from, from the state. And what we've said, we are not even interested in the power. We're just saying fix this system. Um, of course, there are people who, who, who thrive in, uh, in the chaos of the nation. But we are also against those people and we've shown that uh, we will deal with them. We are not interested in having people who want to send our country into chaos. Yeah, yeah that's why you'll realize even businesses. People have been trying to say, oh, Mandamano has been affecting businesses. But the businesses have been helping us, especially as Gen Z. Yesterday when we were protesting, the people who were wearing the orange um, reflectors, why weren't they beating the protesters? Yeah. They were waiting for the guns. It's because we've been peaceful and we've shown that there's a symbiotic relationship between us as Kenyans. So they will try to paint different narratives. They'll try and make it look like, oh, you know, as G, the Kenyans are tired. But deep down, we are supported by our families. We are supported by the older generations and that's why we cannot fail because we have the goodwill of the people mm. so um the entire time during the protest you've received love and hate in equal measure leo kenya wanakupenda kesho wako like okay now you need to back down how are you dealing with that? i'm not dealing i'm just living i'm a man who very uh, up until very recently i was going through a lot even just mentally and um, and i think i've shared this is publicly the Friday before Mandamano started, I was found on a rooftop uh, with a noose on my neck, very well tied. The only thing that saved me is I was unconscious. Like what, 10th floor, I would have fallen off or not, but my friends came in good time. So for me, as a person who knows I might have very limited time, you are adding those struggles into now being a marked man by the state. It is, uh, I feel like my contribution to the movement will be to inject it in every quarter and uh, just sticking to the purpose of, of, of the movement and calling for this and hoping that in, in my doing this, I will inspire a person. You know, the people who really inspire me are the people who tell me, I came to the streets because you were there, because you told me, oh, Nini, we keep going. And I'm like, if I can do that to one person, five, ten people, a hundred people, if all of us can do that, we'll change Kenya for the better. Yeah, we'll cha absolutely change it for the better. Mm. Okay, speaking of mental health, um there are people who are probably, you know, you've talked about being marked by the government, you know. Does that add to the stress that you're having or maybe the things that you're dealing with previously? And how are you handling, with that, handling that? Because it's a lot, you know, having to hide and, you know, every other time you're, you're not very sure about what will happen tomorrow. Of course it does, but I feel like sometimes we greatly underestimate the resilience of the human mind. Uh, remember, right now, you feel like you're doing a lot because you have so many shoots, you have to be here, here, here and there. But you forget, high school, there's a time when you have 11 subjects and you had to specialize, like all of them will have good grades. I think it's just the same way. Um, the human mind is resilient and I'm also surrounded by a lot of love. My inner circle is, yani, these are people who affirm me and remind me to keep on going, both young and old, my family, my friends. And I think that's how I've been going. And of course, God, because there's people who've been praying for me, Maze. Every time before I leave Mandamano, my girlfriend prays, she lays hands on me. I go to like, hey, Maze, as you go out, nini, 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 nini. And, and for me, that's a very important thing. And I'm like, I cannot fail because I am, uh, I am, I am covered. 
So th for me, even with all these stress from Gava and whatnot, mm -hmm. I see it as a this potential for this potential for anyone who's going through whatever it is. This potential to overcome. Mm -hmm. I, I never thought it was, but for me, I've clearly seen that it's possible to overcome yeah. yeah so previously you were not so much into you know um politics but now as we speak you've you've i people have identified you as um someone they can listen to politically so is politics something that you see in your future it, it might be it might not be but i think i've always been political mm -hmm. even the things i discuss is just not directly national politics but it's always been politics, gender politics, um, the politics of race, the politics of colonialism, those kinds of things, the politics in the art. Um, so it might be a thing uh, that I will consider. Um, if, if, if God grants me the opportunity and making a ground and the people accept me, then I will serve my country in whatever capacity that, um, that they give me. Yeah. And if you don't do the things that you talked about, they should hold you accountable. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly, that's exactly why we're doing this. We're creating a yardstick in this movement that we will be judged by. I feel like we need to set the bar so high mm -hmm. such that that we will not we will not we stop normalizing this bare minimum type of thing. MP Baza reform. Lazima mpange lion kwa field na nikitu unaweza apply online. You know those kinds of things. Yeah. Instead of looking for clout with basic needs, we want to set those standards high. So yes, any, I want to be held by the standards by which I held this current government. Yeah. So no bare minimums? Ah, kuna bare minimums. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Just do it. Yeah. A message to our leaders, especially our president. You have the chance to fix this, uh, Mr. Ruto. You have the chance to run a functional government. It is very possible for you to do so. And if you keep on dilly dallying, you as remember, public trust has gone low. You will have to do an entire a, a healing campaign and not just gimmicks in PR. We will have to show us that there's goodwill. Gazette everything you say because you've proven to us that we cannot just depend on your word. Uh, feed the children. Give the youth jobs and IDs. And don't give us uh, jobs to despise us. And if you're a leader and you're watching this, thinking that you will break our spirits by paying uh, propagandists and bloggers, we will remain. Personally, I, have, I promise I will remain. And I know the youth out here and the people who are watching will remain true to their cause. And we are sick and tired of your gimmicks. It's, the generation that you would fool is over. We are now tribeless, fearless, partyless, uh, and peaceful. The, the politics you used to play Kitambo is over. Change, shape up, or ship out. Yeah. Viva. <laughs> Of course, we need the Viva. Let's go. All right, thank you so much, um, Caswell, for your time. Thank you very much for having us. And uh, remember, when the Constitution says all sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya, it's talking about you. So please, 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 as a young person, don't think that your voice is too small. That's what I used to think before I went into the Mandamano. Now look at us. If a if hundred of such kind of people emerge, we will change this country for sure. So keep pushing, uh, keep striving. Uh, we've got this. We will change Kenya. So, but, but kesho mandamano, kama dawa, kama kawa. Uh, we keep it peaceful as always, we've always done. Uh, occupy everywhere. Occupy everywhere. And inje keep injecting the message. Remember the hashtag is Ruto must go. And uh, we will explain it as we go. But uh, inject, inject, inject. Yeah. Right. Thank you guys. So you've heard from Casmo. Viva. <laughs> keep it KOM for more.